Shout out to G-Man Boxing. All right, people, quick post-fight thoughts to Florian Marku versus Chris Jenkins. Florian Marku stops Chris Jenkins with a right hand in the fourth round. Um, Chris Jenkins started this fight really, really, really strongly. Now, Jenkins... Jenkins probably heyday in terms of his kind of when he was finding, finding his feet and he was at his best probably about three four years ago so him going into this fight with Marku to me it was a step in the right direction for Florian Marku he'd be in there with somebody game who would just for sure come to fight and Chris Jenkins certainly did but we'll really get to see what Marku's made of because he'd been in there with guys like Pradan who was all right all right give me the guys what, like Charlton Ryland Charlton again all right but we've never really seen Marku at this level, and you would say Chris Jenkins is still in around the British level, kind of, he, he, he probably would still be in around that level, you know, so early on, Marku, we've seen him kind of box a bit more and be a bit more economical, I remember against Jamie Stewart, he was really trying to let the shots go, and when he does that, and he did it in this fight, when he lets the shots go like that, he's very stationary, you know, Marku is someone where he really needs to be on balance. He really needs to plant himself in order to get maximum velocity into the shots, in order to get like his shots off, in order for him to open up and for him to generate power. Now, the problem with doing that is when you do that, when you really set yourself with two things. One, if you're in there with someone who's a decent long-range boxer, he can literally just take a step back and pivot. And with that, you're stuck in that. You're going to have to reset. You're going to have to constantly reset. Or in this fight... What was happening with Marku was he was he was in position to punch, right? But because he was letting his shots go and because he was so stationary, whenever the punches from Chris Jenkins would come back, he would try and slip them, but a lot of the shots would still get through. Like after the first round, Marku's face was already starting to mark up a bit. For my money, he lost. Well, certainly lost the first two rounds. Anyway, the third round was a bit more close. So Marku strikes me as someone who, if you, he, he, that's a worry. You can't outbox him. Now, he's working with Grant Smith, who, in my opinion, is one of the best up-and-coming coaches in Britain. Some of the work he's been doing with guys like Dalton Smith, Sonny Edwards, fantastic. And the brain on Grant Smith. I wouldn't say Dalton Smith the first time. The brain on Grant Smith, the boxing brain, is tremendous. He gives great advice. He's very soft-spoken in the corner. Some fighters thrive off that. Some fighters don't. But he has a great understanding of boxing fundamentals and a great, he gives great, you hear him in the corner, he gives great advice to his fighters. So Marku, in terms of his team, it's looking quite good in that regard. In terms of this fight, as I said, they were the few little nitpicks. When Marku had his, Marku was having his best when he was getting Jenkins backed up against the ropes. That's when he was really coming into it, he was getting his combinations going. I did find early on, certainly in the first two rounds, that Marku was very, his timing looked very off. He was trying to launch right hands over Chris Jenkins' jab, and they just weren't going anywhere. Like they were just literally flying over the head, and I mean like really flying over the head of Chris Jenkins, or they were just hit. They were just like completely. He was swinging into air. You know, he seemed to be a bit off with the timing early on in the fight. But after about three rounds, it was okay. It kind of came back to him. The end came in the fourth round. Oh, I actually must point out. Marco also, I think it was, a, well, his nose was definitely kind of a bit bloody, which is another thing about defense, his nose got a bit bloody. But a head clash came in in the third round. And I don't know if it was inside the eye or if it was near, but it seemed like a cut, well, it definitely a cut opened on Marco because he was bleeding a bit at the end of the third round. But came out in the fourth round, Jenkins threw a jab, and Marco was able to just come over, the, come over that jab with a right hand, landed bang on the temple or kind of the side of the head of Chris Jenkins. Now, I thought Chris Jenkins was going to go down. It looked The way the sky camera moved, it looked like that kind of angle where he would go down. He, he didn't go down, per se, but he, he sagged right down and was still punching while he was going, kind of sagging down. And his legs were gone at that point. His legs were absolutely gone at that point. I did think the stoppage was premature when I originally seen it live. Upon seeing the replay, and you do see how bad Jenkins legs were as far as I'm concerned if he'd gone down and he got back up it would have been more of the same having said that I, I, it's a tough one it's a real hit and a miss for me because at the same time I'm thinking Jenkins is, was doing well he hadn't been down how badly hurt is he really is he is he completely like out of it out of it or is it just a case of his legs are a bit shaky he'll come he'll get them back maybe he should just take a knee or something like that 
the end of the referee stopped the fight. He did. The, the thing is, there was no complaints from the corner, from the Jenkins corner. Normally, when you see that, it's normally an indication that the corner were okay with the stoppage. You know, sometimes you see corners and they're so animated because they're like, "Why are you stopping the fight? It's premature." There was none of that in this fight, so stoppage. I don't know. Like for me, when I seen it live, I was like, "Premature." premature steve gray is normally quite good with the stoppage to be fair um but florian marco onwards and upwards top of chris congo next chris congo is a good boxer i worry about his punt resistance i mean he was down he was down and he was hurt a few times by mckinson and mckinson we all know isn't a puncher marco certainly hits a lot harder than mckinson so if that fight was made to vote on the same platform me personally i would favor florian marco to beat chris congo i think he'd knock him out personally that's my thoughts. Let me know yours. Smash the like button, lads, if you could. Subscribe if you haven't already. I'll talk to you. Peace.